Hey everyone, Eric Christensen, pharmacist here from meded101.com. Got some uh, important updates for uh, NAPLEX participants uh, in 2025. So uh, basically the content outline has changed. Uh, and so I'm going to run you through the details of some of those changes uh, and what I'm going to be thinking about as I'm uh, planning and preparing uh, to study for this exam. All right, so these changes, uh, if you read through the entire thing, which I did, um, basically the, the changes uh, happen periodically every so often. Uh, in this case, that time period was four years. Uh, 2021 was the last time uh, the content outline was updated. Uh, and essentially what they do is they send out a survey, um, look at pharmacists from a variety of, of fields and different work aspects, uh, and they get their feedback and input on current practices and you know what's important, what's relevant, and uh, particularly uh, as direct statement from uh, this news release or from the updated content outline, uh, they look at tasks that are performed by entry-level pharmacists and corresponding knowledge, skills, and abilities um, associated with that. So that's kind of the, the formal language that they look at. Uh, and used when determining what goes on the content outline. Uh, you can expect 200 scored questions uh, on the NAPLEX, and uh, these changes that I'm going to discuss uh, are will be enacted uh, May 1st, 2025. So uh, new graduates uh, in May here uh, taking their NAPLEX exam, you know, June, July, August of you know, September of 2025, uh, you can expect these changes to be active. All right, so let's uh, first, I'll mention the old content outline from 2021. Uh, they use the term area. Uh, the new content outline uses domain. Uh, those are basically interchangeable. I'm going to use them interchangeably. Uh, we've got six domains or areas uh, noted from the 2021 content outline. Um, in the uh, new content outline, we actually have five. Uh, and then they've changed the language and, and done some different things as well. So uh, if you you know, want to skip ahead to the you know very end, I'm going to talk about how this is going to impact you and what I think you're likely to see more on the exam. Um, but uh, I'll go through kind of each of the individual new domains uh, as well here coming up. So again, put put kind of the, the take-home points um, at the end. If you want to skip forward to that, go ahead. Um, but uh, I'll go through them individually here as well. Uh, so that new content outline, uh, the five domains that we now have, uh, functional knowledge for pharmacy practice, medication use process, uh, patient uh, or person-centered assessment and treatment planning, uh, professional practice, and pharmacy management and leadership. And you can see the percentages uh, outlined here. So first domain, uh, foundational knowledge for pharmacy practice. Uh, there's a bunch of things listed if you want to go look at all the formal languages uh, and what's all within that. I think that's a good idea for you to do. Um, but I've highlighted probably the most important things you're going to see from that uh, on this slide here. So uh, pharmacology, kinetics, dynamics, pharmacogenomics, um, compounding. Uh, you'll note that calculations is found within this uh, domain. And that's probably one of the biggest things um, that I suspect candidates are going to uh, experience less questions on. Okay, so not that you're not going to be tested and it's not going to be significant because, you know, it could definitely make or break your exam still. So you've still got to prepare uh, for calculations. Um, but ultimately, I think you're probably going to see uh, a lower percentage of calculations when you, uh, you know, compared the exam uh, 2025 going forward uh, compared to 2021, for example. So that's probably one of the bigger takeaways uh, that I, I think you should know there. Uh, again, drug development, stats, clinical trials, um, resources. Uh, we've laid all this out uh, within our study materials at meded101.com as well. Uh, we've got some good supplemental resources on that; those things as well. Um, but again, these are just kind of 
you know, foundational knowledge, kinetics, dynamics, pharmacology, genomics, um, and then compounding calculations, uh, drug development, clinical trials, uh, resources as well. A domain two medication use process. Uh, so this involves uh, classifications, indications, um, a lot of your boxed warnings you'll find here. Uh, remember REMS program, um, you know, probably the two classic ones that, that come to mind are, um, you know, clozapine, understanding that REMS program and the processes that need to be taken there. Um, isotretinoin, another classic example that comes up in practice. Um, I would likely uh, suspect you're going to be tested on one or both of those um, within your exam. Maybe not, but, you know, those are, are definitely two um, highly emphasized ones, at least in my experience, um, in taking, you know, pharmacology exams and board exams throughout my career. Uh, therapeutic substitution falls under this. Uh, immunizations falls under this. Uh, and then medication handling and storage as well. All right, domain three. Uh, this is probably the other takeaway. Uh, I think you're going to see more and more clinical questions um, on the 2025 version of the NAPLEX exam uh, compared to older versions. And um, I've been advocating this for years. Uh, you know, we need to um, enhance that knowledge. We need to test on this knowledge. Um, you know, clinical assessments, clinical selection of medications, uh, selecting appropriate therapy, monitoring. Uh, this is, I think, really where the value of pharmacists comes or it's going to be emphasized more and more in the future. Um, so definitely, I think this is a good thing in general that you're probably more likely to see um, more cases, and, you know, clinical decision making. Uh, on the NAPLEX exam. Again, I think it's a good thing in general, um, but it it is what it is here. So what's involved in that, you know, uh, medication history, um, health conditions, you know, signs, symptoms, um, things, things like that, increased risk for certain conditions based upon um, patient factors, uh, special populations. So, you know, I, I'm thinking geriatrics, pediatrics, pregnancy, lactation, uh, that could certainly uh, come into play here. Uh, and then obviously selecting appropriate therapy given that situation, whether it's a you know elderly patient versus a 20 year old patient or a pregnant patient versus a you know 40 year old male, for example. So again, making sure that therapy is appropriate based upon uh, the specific situation you're given. And then obviously monitoring plans, um, patient education, OTC medications, herbal medications, uh, and then devices and self-monitoring. Uh, here's another area where I suspect you you may see a little bit more uh, questioning on this in the, the NAPLEX. Again, just my speculation on this. Um, but you think about, you know, kind of the prominent role in uh, diabetes and, you know, continuous glucose monitoring, things of that nature. Um, these are going to be questions that, that patients have, uh, definitely reflective of where, uh, practices going and how to utilize that information. Um, I think really, really important. And I've um, done a whole separate lecture on continuous glucose monitoring goals, things of that nature within our NAPLEX study materials. So again, I, I think uh, the NAPLEX folks based upon their survey are headed in the right direction. I think you're going to see um, a higher emphasis on clinical topics uh, compared to previous exams. And then the last two domains, so domain four is uh, professional practice, uh, so ADR reporting, medication error reporting, uh, public health initiatives, uh, tobacco, nicotine cessation, uh, antimicrobials, uh, health screenings, opioid stewardship, uh, all important things there as well. Uh, social and ethical considerations as well uh, are, may come up in this, but again, um, pretty small percentage of questions here we're talking um, in the neighborhood of 10 questions uh, within this domain and then same thing for uh, domain five pharmacy management and leadership uh, obviously probably not as highly emphasized um, within the naplex exam 
thinking that we're talking about new graduates and what their competence competencies should be. It's very, very rare that somebody uh, steps into a big pharmacy management leadership role uh, when they're a brand new graduate, right? So, you know, thinking about this and how much importance should be placed on that, uh, I think is obviously lower in an Aplex type exam um, compared potentially to, um, you know, maybe a BCPS exam, for example. So again, thinking about um, uh, pharmacy operations, you know, the regulatory bodies associated with that, um, you know, drug recall shortages, what to do there, quality improvement, um, MUE is definitely something, um, and, and continuous qu quality improvement, that's definitely something that probably comes up more so on uh, some of the specialty exams like BCPS, um, but uh, this is part of the NAPLEX exam, so you're going to see uh, at least probably 10 questions here on this, uh, which would be 5% of that exam. All right, so again, big takeaways here. Um, I think you're going to see a, a heavier focus on clinical topics, drug selection, uh, from that content outline change. Okay. So, you know, be prepared for that and, uh, you know, work on those clinical skills when you're, you know, out on rotations, uh, and kind of developing your study strategies and, and, uh, um, plan there, uh, 200 scored questions. And then, uh, on the flip side of the, uh, clinical side of things, uh, if there's going to be less of something, I think it's probably going to be calculations. But again, it's going to show up in a significant way. You're probably going to have, I would guess, in the neighborhood of 15 to 25 um, calculations questions, which as a percentage may be less than previous NAPLEX exams. Uh, but you start talking about, you know, one out of eight, one out of 10 questions being calculations. It still feels like quite a bit. So again, you can't ignore calculations. Um, but I have, I have a sense, I have a feeling it's, it's probably going to be less than, uh, previous NAPLEX candidates had. Uh, if you're looking for study materials, practice questions, uh, we update our content annually. Uh, we're going to be ready to go for 2025. So go check that out. Uh, if we do any updates, if you're within your access period window, you automatically get those. Um, so, you know, if, if you're looking for study materials, uh, we're in late 2024 here. If you're looking for the 2025 content, um, you know, go ahead, purchase that now, knowing that you're going to get access to any um, additional content, any updates um, based upon, you know, feedback, guideline changes, and all those sort of things. So uh, you can go check out those resources, meded101.com slash NAPLEX is where we've got our study packages. So uh, go check that out. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment below if you've got any questions. I've been following the NAPLEX for over a decade now. Uh, I think we've done a nice job of putting together content that's really going to help you uh, prepare for and pass your exam. Uh, again, any questions, comments, you can drop a comment below this video on YouTube. Uh, if you want to reach out to me at uh, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP, uh, go ahead and do that at mededucation101 at gmail.com. Uh, I try to respond to all the emails I get. I've done that for years. So um, don't hesitate to reach out, leave a comment, suggestions, uh, any feedback is welcome as well. Thanks so much for listening. I uh, hope this helps you prepare for your NAPLEX in 2025 and beyond.